good morning uh, or good afternoon class so this is what I've mentioned to you in the class that we'll be doing recordings and I'll put it in YouTube and I hope that you will repeat so that you watch them and then get yourself remembering all those stuff and of course more important is to pass the exam okay so what we're gonna do is to revise what we see in your F6 chapter 1 resident status for individual right you see to determine whether an individual is a resident we will apply law from 7-1 and you know that there are four parts of 7-1 which is your 7-1-A and then we have 7-1-B, C as well as 7-1-D so you basically need to test yourself to see whether you fulfill all these four conditions to decide whether you are resident or not now see what the law says over here an individual is a resident in Malaysia for the basis year for a particular year of assessment if now let's explore condition in 71A okay now basically they say that he is in Malaysia in that basis year for a period or periods amounting in all to 182 days so the basic condition in A is you must be in the country for a minimum of 182 days right that's what it says huh? okay 182 days now then what do you mean by in that basis year now remember we explained that in the class so if you refer to a basis year you must referring from 1st January to 31st December so that's what we meant by basis year okay now so we're gonna try a simple example over here you see we say that Salim is in the country from 20th of September 2011 to 19th of October 2012 now so let, let's work out the resident status for Salim for 2011 as well as 2012 now the first thing we're gonna do is you gotta count how many days that Salim is in the country now so this is a bit a, a bit of a technique on how do you count the number of days okay 20 of September until 19 of October now you see September has 30 days okay September has 30 days now you are in from the 20th so that means on the 1st to the 19th you are not in so we're going to take out 19 days then we're going to add the days for October November December so based on that so let us do a quick calculation 30 minus 19 right friend that's one zero three days in 2011 now then for 2012 you're in the country for 31 days in January right you should know 2012 is a leap year so we have 29 days in February March, April, May, June, July, August, September, and you're until the 19th. So let's see, that will actually be two hundred and ninety-three days for two zero one two. So what will your status be for Y 2011 and 2012? Now, if we just base on the condition that we have seen in 71A, we know that Y 2011, you have actually failed 
718. Okay? Now, we need to have 182 days. And you only have 103. And of course, you can't just be adding up all the period from September all the way to October and say that you actually have 300 over days because the law uses the word basis here. That means you only check from 20th of September until the end of December 2011. Okay, So that's the basis year for 2011. So you fail because you do not have 182 days. There is no... 182 here, okay? Now, but for Y2012, we can see over here that you are actually having 293 days. So, you have satisfied 71A and you become a resident. So, again, class, why are you a resident for 2012? See, so become a resident for 2012 because Salim is in Malaysia for 293 days. Now, this is the case, but that is not the reason you must say it in the exam. You have to mention the law that you fulfilled. So, you are saying that he's in the country for 293 days. And that has fulfilled the condition of being in Malaysia for, well, you either say 182 days or more, or a simpler way of stating this is you just say at least 182 days. Follow? Right, so that's the conditions that we have here for 71A, okay? Now, I mentioned that in 2011, you actually failed 71A. Well, I didn't say that Salim is not a resident. Now, that's because to be a resident, you actually have four ways of testing. So even though you failed 1A, you will still proceed on to see whether an individual can satisfy B or C or D. So that's why we have to look on, okay? So what's the conditions of 7-1-B? Now this will be the most complicated that we have here in the law. Now it says that if let's say he is in Malaysia, in that basis year, for a period is less than 1-8-2, and that period is actually linked by or linked to and we are looking at another period another period of 182 consecutive days now this is what it says that we are looking at one period that is less than 182 and that one period that is less than 182 is linked to or by another period of 182 consecutive days. Now, notice earlier that Salim, he failed 71A in 2011. But if we see further, we actually notice that in 2011, Salim is only in the country for 103 days. Okay, now that's what we see here, 103 days. Now, but you notice that the 103 days, this period is actually connected with 2012 that has 293 days now friend that period refers to this so again the law say that period that is less than 182 now you notice this is less than 182 but it's linked now in this way we can see that 2011 is actually linked to 
notice this is called link to so if you link to 2012 now again in the law it says that you must link to another period of 182 so that period that you link with 182 will be these periods that we see that in purple color which you don't add the 103 you notice so you must not count the days with the 103 that means you're just borrowing from the following year so how many days you have now in 2012 now you have one 293 days and this is already satisfied at least 182 consecutive day now the word consecutive refers to what refers that there's no gap so you notice that throughout the year you've been staying in the country all the way from here until here and then you can see there's no gap so once there's no gap then this 293 is considered 182 consecutive you fulfill that condition now once you fulfill that condition then we say 2011 your resident so that will turn Salim become a resident for Y 2011 by virtue of 71B right there will be a couple more of conditions that we will need to see in 71B but uh, that's it for this short video we just look until here and we will continue again in the next video about how to elaborate all the other conditions of 71B right thank you class thanks for watching and keep watching and improve yourself again in the future